We're going to move back to theory and the focus in this lesson is showing an understanding of the basis of different number system, especially binary, deanery, hexadecimal number bases. Again, you're pretty familiar with these, so this should be a light lesson for you. The new thing that you're probably going to be focusing on is learning about ones and twos complement representation for binary numbers and converting an integer value from one number base to another. Also, the next new thing that you're focusing on is performing binary addition and subtraction, which is going to be new for AS level because you perhaps haven't covered it before at IGCSE. So the key terms that you'll probably hear me talking about in this lesson are binary and bit that you pretty much are okay with. The new things are ones complement. So far, we've just looked at positive integers and using ones complement, we can represent a binary digit in both negative and positive representations. Similarly, twos complement is each binary digit in a number is reversed and we add one to it to allow both negative and positive numbers to be represented. Why do we do this? We'll find out a bit more in the lesson. And of course, you've got hexadecimal and then sign and magnitude, which you need to be aware of that binary number system where the left bit is used for the sign, zero is positive and one is negative and the remaining seven bits are the magnitude or the value of that number. So let's start by revisiting number systems and just getting these fresh in our memory. Of course, there's nothing new here. You already know that. Uh, we have the Deanery number system, which is based on base 10. Why? Because we humans have 10 fingers and we learn to count on those and the digits we use are 0 to 9. So it works with using place values, which go up in tens. So you have units, you have tens, then you have tens times tens, which is 100 and 1,000, then 10,000 and so on. Pretty straightforward. You know this inside out. Like I said, you use it every day. The next number system we'll be looking at is base 2 one, and this is the binary number system. Again, a branch of mathematics already exists, which is called Boolean mathematics or Boolean algebra, and I'm sure you, you've covered that before. Here, computers use two digits, 0 and 1, and we go up in units twos, two times twos, fours, then eventually eight, 16, 32, and so forth. So the base two, we just simply raise to the power of zero for one, one for two, and so forth uh, as we go along. Again, nothing new here. You've been learning about this since IGCSE. So we'll move on to the next number system, which is hexadecimal. And again, another familiar face here, the hexadecimal number system, base 16, why do we use it? Because it makes big numbers easier to manage on a computer. So instead of writing mega binary digits, we can just have shorter hexadecimal digits representing that because the maths work out really well because each hexadecimal digit equates to four bit binary. So, you know, you just simply replace four bit binary with one hex number. So it reduces the amount of characters you have on screen. It works with base 16, digits zero to nine, and then obviously you use letters for 10 to 15, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And everything goes up in place values of units, 16s, 16 times 16, 256, 4096, and so on. Again, nothing new here. You know this inside out as well. You still need to know how to convert binary to deanery. And again, pretty straightforward method. Zero values are ignored place values in the one columns are added. So in this particular case, we're simply taking the place value of 16, adding it to the place value of four, and finally adding the place value of one, which gives us 16 plus four plus one, which is 21. So pretty straightforward, and you know how this works. Next up is deanery to binary conversion. Here's the number 107. So how do we work across it? Well, we divide it by the base two, and you simply take the remainder. So Two goes 53 times into 107, remainder one, we write it down, then we do it again, two goes 26 times into 53, remainder one, and we continue doing it all the way to, to the end. Until we get to something which, when we divide it by two, so one divided by two gives us a remainder one, and you're left with zero. So put this upside down, so we, we put the zeros at the bottom, all the way up, and that's basically your binary conversion, and if you work it out, it should give you 107. 
Uh, again, there are different methods. Whichever method you're comfortable with, use that. Next up is binary to hexadecimal. This is pretty straightforward. As we know that each four bit binary is equivalent to a hexadecimal digit. So we just split from the left side to the right side into bits of four. So each four bit binary nibble is equivalent to one hexadecimal digit. So in this case, the one, 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 one is equivalent to 15, which is equivalent to F in hexadecimal. And similarly, 0101 is equivalent to five, which stays as a hexadecimal to binary is the same way, just you reverse the process. So you take the hexadecimal number, divide it into individual digits, and each digit can be converted into a four bit nibble pretty easily. So three becomes 0011, B becomes 1011, and A becomes 1010. And if you work out what A is, A is equivalent to 10, and the binary works out that way. Once you've got all the four bit codes, you just put them all together, and 3BA becomes this long string of binary digits. What's new though is binary addition. And binary addition is based on a set of rules where if you have two zeros, you end up with a zero. If you have a zero and a one, you end up with a one. And if you have two ones, you end up with a zero with a carry of a one to the next column. Sometimes you might end up with three ones, which means that you have a one with a carry of one. I haven't written that particular rule down, but that's there. And in rare cases where you might end up with three ones, you might need to just write a one at the bottom and the one carries to the next column. So have a look at the examples, which you see on screen. We've got one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. We add a one to the end, pretty straightforward. The new number is one, one, zero, one. 0011. Pretty straightforward stuff here. If you look at the next one, which is now adding two binary numbers together, it becomes slightly a bit more complex. So the 00 at the end gives you a 0. According to our rule, that's fine. The 11 gives us a 0, and the 1 gets carried to the next column. The next columns have two zeros, so that means you end up with a 1 there. And if you follow everything through, you'll probably see that everything just works out exactly the way it is uh, 0 1 gives you 1 1 0 gives you 1 0 1 gives you 1 1 0 gives you 1 and 1 0 also gives you 1 so the new number is 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 so nothing so complicated binary addition is pretty straightforward stuff as long as you remember the rules remember the third rule uh, 1 plus 1 gives you a 0 with a carry of 1 However, there's another one which says that if you have three ones that you're adding, it gives you one with a carry of one as well. And we'll probably use that in one of the questions later on. So how do we represent negative numbers? And, and that's important because later on, we're going to be looking at subtraction and subtraction involves a positive number and a negative number. And there are three methods mainly. The first one is one's complement where you invert the binary number for the negative version. So in this case, we've got binary 90, which is 0101, 1010. And what we do is we flip the zeros to one and the ones to zeros, which gives us 10100101. So that's equivalent to binary minus 90. Pretty straightforward stuff. However, that dynamically reduces the range of numbers that we can have in 8-bit binary. Next up, we have two's complement. Now in this one, we follow the same step, we invert the binary number, but we then add one to the rightmost bit. So if we were looking at binary 90, we invert it, it becomes 10100101, and then we add a one to it, which then changes everything to 10100110. And in two's complement, the place values end up being the following. The first one ends up as minus 128, and the rest of the ones end up at 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And two's complement is the most common way to represent negative numbers in computer science at the moment. So there's another one that we're going to be talking about in a moment, which is sign and magnitude. However, two's complement is the best algorithm because it gives us a good combination of numbers within the, the range of 256 possible values we can have in eight bits and, and beyond as well. Another option of representing negative numbers is sine and magnitude. Now here, keep it very simple. The leftmost bit is a sine. The remaining bits are the magnitude or the value. So we have zero for positive, one for negative. So minus one would be one, 
zero 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 one and zero 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 one would be positive one so the first one indicates the sign and then you've got seven digits for your values and that's again another way of representing negative numbers problem though is that when you have a lot of binary digits going off in a string of binary digits it's very difficult to know what's the sign bit and what's the other one and that's where two's complement comes in really handy because it, it kind of requires an algorithm and if you know from your data transmission error checks anything that has an algorithm tends to be more secure and representing negative numbers and positive numbers using two's complement tends to be much more reliable as well. We're going to try and spend some time to put our learning into action. So you've got about 10 minutes and what I want you to do is try to add the two numbers, try to carry out a subtraction 95 minus 68 where you need to take 68 and convert it using two's complement to a negative num number which is minus 68 and then carry out an addition basically. And then you might want to have a go at carrying out the subtraction 49 minus 80 again using two's complement and see how you cope with it it might take you longer than 10 minutes and if that's so that's okay so pause the video and go through these right so that's the end of the lesson you should know the rules of binary addition you should also know three different ways of representing negative numbers in binary and you should know the difference between one and two's complement Hopefully that was easy for you. If you've got any questions, obviously reach out to me. And in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at binary coded decimals. And obviously we're going to revisit the uses of hexadecimal. That's all for this lesson. So I'll see you in the next one.